What's up everybody? In this video, I wanna talk about lying on your resume and being a dirty little cheater. All right, so this happens to a lot of us who don't have any experience when you're learning how to code and you're trying to get your first job and all your previous work experience has nothing to do with programming or even tech or IT or anything like that and you're trying to break into the industry and many times you have to like fluff up your resume and make it seem like you're a good candidate for the job and a lot of the times you don't have anything that you can put on your resume because you don't have any experience. The reason why I bring this up is because recently I had Neil on my channel doing one of my talking with developer interviews. He's a YouTuber, he runs Kodu Community, he organizes meetups, he has his own business and he's a senior level developer with a lot of experience. But when talking to him, he basically said that, you know, he had to do what he had to do when he got his first job or to get his first job. He had to kind of lie on his resume about experience because he was running into the issue of getting interviews, doing very well in interviews and then being rejected because his lack of experience. And that's like one of those conundrums that is really hard to figure out, right? If you actually nail an interview and you get to talk to somebody and they really like you and then you get turned down because you don't have experience yet you did really well in all the other aspects of the interview, of course it's gonna frustrate you and eventually it's gonna make you wanna lie on your resume like Neil did. And I don't think that everyone should just straight up bold face lie on their resume in order to get a job or in order to get interviews because here's the thing, right? Anything you put on your resume is free game. You are gonna get asked questions about it. If you put languages that you're not familiar with and they ask you about it, you're gonna look stupid in an interview. If you put experience on there that isn't real and they call those employers and they never even heard of you or they say, yeah, he worked for us, but he was there for a week and did free work and we never actually had him on the payroll. I don't know why he said that he worked here for six months. A lot of these things will come up in interviews, right? So you have to be aware that they might ask you about the things that you put on your resume. Now, when I was talking to Neil about this, I mentioned that a lot of the freelance work or freelance work that I put on my resume was a little fluff. It was websites that I made for friends and family members and people that I knew rather than real clients. But I worded it in a way that made it sound good. I also spoke to these relatives and these friends and these family members and these people that I knew and told them that I'm going to kind of like list them on there. Because when it's freelancing, it's really hard for an employer to contact your clients. So you can kind of fib a little bit there. But I had websites to back up everything I was saying on there because I didn't want to look like a jerk. I also maybe overemphasized my abilities in certain places and I had to kind of talk up the duties and descriptions that I had for certain things just to make it sound better. I see that many people who are just getting started and I did it to my early resume, my early portfolio, I spoke in a way of making myself sound very amateur. I've spoken a way of making myself sound very junior. I called myself an aspiring web developer. I called myself a hobbyist. I called myself a lot of things that made it look like I wasn't a professional. And once I started removing some of those things and making it seem like I was actually doing some of this stuff part time for a living. And once I was able to start basically fluffing up my resume and emphasizing the things that I had worked on and some of the skills that I had and then throwing in a little bit of extra stuff there that may or may not have been completely true, I started getting more phone calls. And when I got those phone calls and I got those interviews, I started doing better. And I had practice with interviews and I started actually thinking that this was gonna be possible. I didn't just lie on my resume, but I had to do what I had to do in order for me to start getting calls and in order for me to start getting interviews. And then when the recruiter that got me my first job talked to me before I had the interview set up or anything, she went through my resume and she had me write down a bullet point list of everything that they were looking for that I had worked with. And I share this list in my resume video where I show my first resume and I show that bullet point list and then I show my most recent resume that got me hired at my most recent job, which I'll link above somewhere. And if you watch that video and you see that bullet point list that I mentioned, you'll see that I really tried to talk up what I knew 
in what they were looking for. And I wasn't lying. I mean, I definitely talked myself up. I wasn't gonna talk myself down and I had a bad habit of talking myself down. I still do it. I have a lot of imposter syndrome. I'm self-taught. I'm a high school dropout. I deal with this stuff every day and I really feel like I don't know as much as I do. It's also a reason why I haven't really started doing tutorials yet because I feel like I'm not ready to start teaching other people even though I've been doing this for so long now that I am probably well qualified to teach people a lot of the basics that I know fairly well. But that's, that's a story for another video and I'm digressing. But what I want to say is that do what you got to do to get hired. Don't just boldface lie unless you realize that it's the one thing that's really impacting you and it's experience based. Because when you start lying about knowing stuff, you're gonna, they're gonna figure it out almost immediately. If you have been doing this for six months and you sit down with someone who's been doing it for five or 10 years and starts talking to you and you start claiming that you know all these different things on your resume, after 10, 15 minutes of them talking to you and questioning you on a lot of those technologies that you're lying about, they're gonna know that you're lying. So it's better to be honest about the things that you know and try to talk yourself up a little bit more while maybe fluffing some of the things that may affect you that don't directly impact your abilities. So with all that said, you know, think about what you put on your resume. It could really affect you getting a job for the better or for the worse. If you lie on your resume a lot, and you start realizing that it's affecting you in a bad way, then maybe you should probably stop. Again, I'm not making this video to tell you to go out and lie on your resume just so you can get a job, but I get it. The hustle's real and there's a lot of candidates out there. And sometimes you just need to be able to get in front of someone and talk to them and let them pick your brain and let them see how motivated you are and let them see how hungry you are and let them see how much you want the job because that's where it happens. That's where getting hired happens. It doesn't happen on the resume. It doesn't happen on the cover letter. Those things just get your foot in the door. So just keep those things in mind. Do what you gotta do to get hired. And that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna end this video now. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to drop a comment down below and let me know some of the things you're struggling with in order to get interviews or get a job or if your resume is lacking and what it looks like. Check out my video that I mentioned that I show my resume so you can see what a resume looked like without any experience. And subscribe to my channel if you wanna know more about learning how to code and hear about how I did it self-taught with no experience in my 30s. All right, with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.